So a while back, some people may remember me doing a quick short on what to do with this Raspberry Pi 3B. Now this used to run my Optiprint. Uh, I've had a lot of suggestions to use it as Pi Hole. However, I do already have that virtualized in my stack, so not really any need. However, I have actually thought of a really good use for this. If you don't know what one of these is, basically it says Zing, but it's not, it's a Rolo printer. So this is a thermal six x four label printer. Uh, the beauty of this is that obviously it saves me a lot when I'm sending out stuff from postage point of view, because I'm never having to replace anything inside this thermal printer. However, one of the annoying things is, is that it's not networked. So you can get Wi-Fi versions of these, however, they are usually double or triple the price. So what I thought is, could I use this Raspberry Pi to make this print server to run this? Now all I need is a 32 gig. It doesn't need to be this big. You can do it actually with an eight, uh, but a 32 gig SD card or micro SD card and a Raspberry Pi plus the power supply for it. And I'm going to networkify this. So what we're going to need is something to put the Raspberry Pi OS onto our micro SD card. Now, obviously, I've connected up a micro SD card reader. You can use a USB one uh, or very other different methods. If you've got a laptop that you can just connect one into, you can do it exactly the same way. So I'll put all the links in the description, but basically download this for the variant of OS you've got. Um, I'm obviously using Windows, so let's open this up. What you'll notice is I've already gone and selected my options. So the idea would be that I'll go and select a Raspberry Pi 3 for this. I'll go and choose my OS. Now, I could go with that. However, because what I'm going to use is going to be very low level, what I'll do is go 64-bit light, so I have no desktop environment and then select the storage, which you can see is recognizing my 32 gig. Now when I click next, this is where I can actually make my life a little bit easier. So I can go edit settings at this point and I can configure certain elements. So what I'm going to do is leave it like that. Uh, I can set my username and password. So I'm certainly going to set a password there. Uh, I can configure my wireless LAN. So if I want it to work, wirelessly, I can do that. So let me just go and do that. So then what I can do is once I've entered my SSID, I can obviously click show password if I want to show that and also set other locale settings. So for this, that's absolutely fine. It's worth checking services to enable SSH because you're going to need that. Uh, enable password authentication, so that should do the job. If I wanted to create an SSH key, then I can. Um, and then, yeah, just that's absolutely fine. I don't need anything else from that. Click save and then apply those out thing to the OS and it's going to tell me that it's going to overwrite that. So I'll just click that on and it will prepare to write that device. Now you will see because I'm running this in Windows, it does tend to have a little bit of a fit because it's obviously trying to format the device at the same time. So once it's finished writing, it will then go and verify the image, which is quite important to let it do that. You can cancel it at this stage if you want. However, I would always say it's worthwhile just letting it finish off that verification of the image that's wrote to the device. So I'm just going to insert the card into the Raspberry Pi 3 for the time being and power this on. Now, I'm not actually going to physically hardwire it because I want to see if it's taking those Wi-Fi credentials. Now I do have one of those inline power bits that enables me to flick it on that way. So I'm just gonna let that boot up and then I will go over to my device and see if I can SSH onto it. So I've managed to work out the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. Now to do that, I used uh, my Unify console. So I can see here, although it's been connected in the past, the uptime is only one minute and it's this one here and then I can I can pretty much pull the IP address which is great. So using the IP address I can uh, tell it into this. So it's going to ask me to say about the key not being cached in. Uh, I'm just going to log in as the credentials I set. 
and then we should be absolutely logged in and that's beautiful so we're at a good stage now to uh, continue so what i'm going to do is just run a few commands to get myself set up ready for where i'll need to be so the first one is just to do an apt update so let's just run that um, that's just to make sure we update all the packages uh, i could also obviously do an upgrade um, which i'll do in a moment but this is just to get it. So this is all, all been done over the Wi-Fi, so I can tell that this will actually work as a Wi-Fi device. I could obviously wire it as well, um, but having it Wi-Fi enables me to pretty much plug this in anywhere, which is quite useful. So what I'm then gonna do is just the upgrade. So again, the similar process, just run the upgrade path. It will just make sure that we've got all the latest uh, repositories and they're all installed. Finally, what we're gonna do before we actually do too much with the actual printer is to run a cups installation now cups is what we're going to use as our print server so let's just get that deployed and obviously click yes to proceed and so that will go away and start installing cups for us So this process will take around about five or 10 minutes. So my suggestion is go and. So that's finally finished. Now what we need to do is just run a couple more bits before we start grabbing the Rolo driver. And that is mainly to make sure that we modify the user to have admin rights. So if you've left it as Pi by default, you don't need to edit this, um, but basically, as I change mine to Andy C, I'm gonna have to make sure that that one is changed there. So that will enable me to do that. Now, <clears throat> next step is to grab the Rolo driver. So what I'm going to do is grab the beta driver from here. So I just grab this, uh, hit that there. That will grab that driver. Um, we'll then need to unzip said driver. Once unzipped, that will enable the driver to be run. And then we're just going to install that driver at this place. So again, all of these I will stick inside uh, a blog on my website. So they've all run in the background, which is great. Now, what we need to do is do two more things. One is to enable us to connect to Cups remotely to administrate it. So what I need to be able to do is obviously go to the Raspberry Pi's device on 631 and enable that. So again, just a couple of any um, sudo commands to run. These are the final ones. And then what we'll do is get on to the next step and then just run a restart on it. Now, all being said and well, this is now we're at a good point. So that's just going to restart the cup service. And we should be good. I'll go and now connect the printer. So what I'm gonna do is try to bring the printer mostly into shop for this, just so you can see what we're doing. But yeah, we'll connect this to one of the USBs here. Again, everything is still running wirelessly, not any tomfoolery or trickery. Obviously I could just use the ethernet, which I might do long-term, but it's just useful to set it up this way. So the next step is to come to the website, which you can see here again, I'll link this in the description, but this is raspberrypi.local. That would be the host name. So if I changed that host name earlier, it would be different. And the port is 631, but we're good to go. We are connected in. So that looks pretty promising. Um, we're literally at the home page. We can click on administrator and then we'll see if we can add a printer. So hopefully all being well. It does say here that we need to access this page using that URL and it's going to obviously not allow me to use uh, SSL at this point, but we'll sort that out a bit later. So it's looking for my logging. Hopefully all being well, that will function. Looks good. Uh, we'll kick local printer. And what we're looking for is this one here. 
and then click continue. Now we're going to give it a name because that's not a great name to be honest. Uh, we'll call this wireless uh, Rolo. Uh, and that's now a better description of And location will be office. Uh, certainly want to share this printer. So that gives me that option. Uh, and we'll now be able to go and select the appropriate driver. All being well. So we need to just find that Rolo driver. Click continue. And that will absolutely do. And then click add printer now what it's looking for is the media size so we need to set that correctly uh, I think it's that one and we'll go in and make sure that we set all of the relevant stuff for this so all the defaults before we do too much so let's have a look administration manage printers that one there um, let's set the default options let's go into printer settings like a bit more darkness to be honest so 12 and that slow that a bit down because what I notice with when you do like Royal Mail in the UK they tend to be a bit um, yeah so we'll set those. Um, now what we'll do is we'll do a print, a test print to prove it works. Print test page. Let's see what happens. Now we see we get filled to fail. Now don't worry about that too much. If you do see that, there is a way to fix it. So to fix a filter failed is just a simple, and let's just pop back to here and run the following command. And then we'll probably just need to refresh and hopefully everything will be okay. We'll try another test print directly. So the good thing is I don't ever mind telling you when I've done something wrong. Now, I run that command, rebooted, and what generally happened was I was getting that filter error again. Now, the reason for it was that I was running the 64-bit when I first showed that. That's hence why I put that on the text there. Make sure you use the 32 light Pi OS because you won't generally get any problems then. Just re going through that whole process, putting the 32 bit on, and we got the following result. And as you can see, the test print now comes out. So there we are. That is how I've made my thermal printer wireless using my Raspberry Pi as a print server. Now, the great thing is this will primarily work for any printer. As long as you can get a driver that works in Raspberry Pi and it's supported from a filter perspective within cups, then generally you're OK. So give it a go. If you've got a really old printer that you just want to actually test out, it doesn't have a Jet Direct card or some kind of Ethernet functionality then that is a simple and easy way to make it networkable for you to print remotely now the great thing is you can also get apps for various other platforms whether it be mac whether it be uh, apple or android the cups app is available now for doing it on android there is some additional certification stuff that needs to be done i've stuck that post in a blog on my website so go and check that out Anyway, if you have liked what you've seen today, um, please do me a massive favour, hit that like, subscribe, and even that bell. And as always, I'll see you next time.